Welcome everyone and thank you for joining GTC. I also would like to thank you for joining us in this session today. This is a very special session with NTT and Red Hat to talk about NTT's multi-access edge computing platform, which was built to deliver edge AI services. Uh, before we start, I'd like to remind everyone uh, that we are available to answer any questions over chat during the talk. So as questions come up, please click on the chat button on the bottom right of your web browser to submit any questions you have and, and you happily answer them. Let me introduce myself. So my name is uh, João Gomes and I have the privilege to work at NVIDIA and lead our Telco Edge solution development efforts. Uh, which with me today, I have a few distinguished colleagues from NTT and Red Hat. The presenters will introduce themselves as we proceed to the different parts of the presentation. As you can see, we have an extensive agenda to cover today, highlighting different aspects of the NTT's Mac platform. For the first topic highlighted in green here, uh, Richard G will present with me. Rich, why don't you introduce yourself and, and kick us off? Thanks, Joao. Yeah, my name is uh, Rich G. I'm a senior director in Red Hat's Industries and Global Accounts Group. And we've got a lot to cover today, so let's get started. So why NVIDIA and Red Hat? Well, at its core, the strength of our partnership is a shared cloud data vision based on open source technologies to drive flexible deployment models for on-premise, private, public, and edge cloud. Joao, what were some of your thoughts on our partnership? Yeah, so as, as we know, NVIDIA is, is the AI competing company, which you see on the left. And Red Hat is the open source solution company on the right. And we have established a very broad collaboration to really accelerate and simplify the development and deployment of AI and graphics applications. All of these align with uh, cloud native principles and open source technology. Uh, and because of that, working with the ecosystem is key to our collaboration. Rich, why don't you expand on that for us a little bit? Sure. We'll be talking today uh, quite a bit about our leading platforms, but ultimately it's together that we build a broad ecosystem to deliver innovative solutions on an open hybrid cloud application platform. In this session, we'll see how NTT has leveraged our, our partnership and our platforms to deliver new 5G AI and edge services. In case you're not that familiar with Red Hat or OpenShift, here's an important, a uh, few important things to know. First, all Red Hat software development is done in open source. So you probably know that we participate in and create community powered upstream projects. Then we integrate multiple projects to foster community platforms. Finally, we stabilize these platforms and projects together with a rich ecosystem of services and certifications. The colored blocks represent an example of our platforms. Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform is an enterprise-ready Kubernetes container platform with full-stack automated operations to manage hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, and edge deployments. It's a unified platform that has, a, has integrated many open source projects, tools, and the service is critical for both developers and operations. Here you can also see a sampling of some certified partners, which shows the breadth and depth of our ecosystem. In many ways, OpenShift is an ecosystem platform for creating and managing cloud native applications. The emergence of containers, Kubernetes, and DevOps centric application delivery has been driven by many different open source projects. So being able to leverage a robust ecosystem is key to any successful digital transformation. Let's look at how NVIDIA and Red Hat work together to accelerate AI and address some common industry challenges. Thanks, Rich. Um, that was good. Uh, well, this session is about NTT's Mac platform, right? That leverages capabilities that both Red Hat and NVIDIA have built together. And what you can see on this picture are some of the foundations of this solution. Uh, EGX at the bottom is, is the NVIDIA platform that enables different AI applications such as intelligence video analytics, augmented and virtual reality, robotics, and 5G. These applications, they leverage GPU accelerated compute to implement different AI, deep learning, and graphical technologies required by other applications. And the key here is, is to enable independent developers to create these apps using different application frameworks that NVIDIA has built. As you can see here in the picture, Metropolis, CloudXR, Aereo, Isaac, and others. These frameworks, they provide tools and SDKs to speed up development time and also ensure compute efficiency of the applications. 
This in turn creates uh, a large ecosystem of applications from dependent software vendors that service providers like NTT can benefit from. Uh, these applications, they need to rely on open source software to access GPU compute and run as cloud native software. And, and this is a very important part of the collaboration we have with Red Hat. Uh, Rich, would you mind uh, expand a little bit on the open source collaboration and the different things we're enabling, like the GPU operator and others? Sure. So in addition to our certified ecosystem I showed you earlier, um, we have many open source projects helping with hardware and workload acceleration. One of them being Operative Framework. Operative Framework is an open source uh, toolkit to manage Kubernetes native applications called operators in an effective, automated, and scalable way. We collaborate on NVIDIA CPU operator to simplify and automate the management of all software components needed to provision and monitor GPUs. As mentioned previously, OpenShift enables customers, partners, and developers to easily leverage technologies and modern application models to rapidly create, deploy, and manage new services. All these frameworks working together will enable many industry solutions, especially as we move to the edge. The intelligent video and analytics use case you will hear about today is in the telco and retail industries, uh, but it's applicable for many other industries, such as logistics, manufacturing, and healthcare. Let's take a look at how we work together with SE East to create a new Telco Edge offering. So Telcos have been transforming their network to be flexible through control and user plane separation and, hard and software and hardware disaggregation. Software-driven networks have embraced open architectures, complete off-the-shelf systems, and open source software. Cloud native technologies have been adopted with categorization of network functions in the 5G core and radio access network. However, it's not just about deploying higher bandwidth speed and low latency networks. The end goal is really to rapidly offer new edge services to customers, which cannot be done with infrastructure and application silos. OpenShift is the unifying hybrid cloud platform for the telco network functions and the enterprise edge applications. My Red Hat colleague, Suji Yamasan, will be highlighting how it is deployed for 5G from the cloud and network core through all the edge layers. He'll cover how NTTE used OpenShift to create a cloud-native, multi-access edge computing AI platform offer deployed across their edge sites to drive new services. He'll also describe how we help with the developer pipeline to improve application delivery. Then Hashimoto-san from NTT East will talk about how this new cloud-native MEC platform offer is speeding up creation and deployment of applications and how it's more scalable. Then he'll share a retail use case with intelligent video analytics, which shows how to improve customer service and sales. Joao, can you tell us a little bit more about NVIDIA and intelligent video analytics? Sure. So before we, we hear from Sugiyama-san and Hashimoto-san, let me conclude this intro and, and hand it over for them. Uh, so NTT has built this, this edge platform to deliver AI applications based on, on our common technology. One of these application is computer vision, or also known as intelligence video analytics. Intelligence video analytics is truly one of the most amazing uh, technology of that AI and edge compute enable. And in this diagram, what you see is on, on the left, uh, some video cameras acting as IoT sensors. These cameras, which can be connected over 5G or fiber, send video upstream for processing at the edge with AI and deep learning techniques. Uh, AI running at the edge detects objects, patterns, behaviors in the video streams, which then provides actions and insights for applications. Uh, IVA is being used today by all the major industries and verticals like SMBs, stadiums, sports arenas, retail, you name it. And IVA is, is a very nascent technology, it's a new technology. And, and the way we enable the ecosystem is with the application frameworks we, we build, like Metropolis, as you can see on the top right corner on this, on this diagram. Metropolis being an application framework, it provides SDKs, APIs, and tools for developers to build these applications. And ultimately what Metropolis creates and enables is this large number of apps from hundreds of independent software vendors that service providers like NTT can leverage to create new services. And that is, in a nutshell, what this is really about. I will now hand it over to Sugi Yamasan that will share more details on how this is actually implemented by NTT with Red Hat and NVIDIA technologies. Hello, everybody. My name is Haidu Sugiyama. 
chief architect at Red Dot. From my side, through this talk, we'd like you to know that latest edge trend in Japan and open to foundation technology that is advantage of NTT's Mac AI platform. First off, let me briefly talk about what edge type we are covering and our Red Hat positioning of the edge. Edge covered many areas. This slide illustrates tiered edge structure and deployment pattern. I summarize four types of edge in this slide. Device edge, custom premise edge, telecom edge, and centralized cloud edge. We have two edge products, RHEL and OpenShift Container Platform. RHEL can be deployed as a device edge and custom premise edge and radio access network distributed unit. OpenShift Container Platform can be deployed as custom premise edge and telecom edge, including far edge, near edge, regional edge. Far edge is a local access site such as NTT Group Center. Near edge and regional edge are the regional aggregation site. And we focus on the telecom edge in this session, especially to the regional aggregation sites. In the telecom edge area, we have a flexible design to deploy OpenShift Kubernetes node with a machine config pool that service provider can select designed machine type such as DRAM, distributed radio access network, CRAM, cloud radio access network, and cloud native MEC in each Kubernetes cluster. We have three unique design for OpenShift cluster in addition to the standard Kubernetes cluster. OpenShift 3 node cluster, OpenShift remote worker node cluster, and we have planned to release a single node OpenShift cluster this year. OpenShift 3 node cluster integrates OpenShift worker and the supervisor node to each of the three server in the single cluster. OpenShift remote worker node cluster can extend the single worker node to near edge or far edge from OpenShift supervisor node placed in the regional edge or core site. Single node OpenShift will be integrating worker and supervisor in a single server. So we have a solution for zero touch provisioning across telecom edge and telecom core. Japan is now heating up edge computing deployment, 5G core standalone deployment, 5G radio access network deployment and local 5G or private 5G deployment. Actually, I already had a joint session with NVIDIA at the GTC Japan last year to talk about OpenShift 5G radio access network with Aurelia GPU SDK. OpenShift supports full stack of NVIDIA GPU. OpenShift can be designed as DU, CU, Mac, and 5G Core, 5, OpenShift can be also designed as an AI edge platform. In the current trend, of course, we are now in the 5G era, but we also know that we are entering the AI era in the market demand of 5G and beyond 5G to a 6G in the next decade. Entity East is starting to launch a project called Leiwa. They are deploying new style of Mac AI platform through the project Rayva, leveraging regional edge with interconnected wide area network. As you might know, most mobile network operators in Japan are using facilities in NTT Group Center to build their radio access network, and most service providers are also using NTT's fixed access network in each NTT Group Centers already placed in the nationwide Japan with many optical fibers. Each regional edge node aggregates entity group center in each region. The project Rewa provides heterogeneous computing resource with CPU and GPU 
and resource of data like storage in addition to the network resource in each regional area through the, their Mac Air platform to help to accelerate co-creation edge business together with business partners and customers. So, it's time to Hashimoto-san. He's based in the NTT East headquarters in Tokyo. He will talk about the business case on Mac AI platform, accelerating by OpenShift and NVIDIA GPU. Hello, everyone from Japan. In my part, I'd like to introduce about a video analysis AI platform we're developing for this summer. This is a Mac platform integrates networking and computing to make video analysis more accessible. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Yuki Hashimoto from NTT East. I'm new business development for IBA. Then we NTT East are Japanese leading telecommunications company with over $16 billion in sales a year. We operate in a wide range of domestic market by utilizing the customer base and the expertise in communication networks and ICT. We have 1244 million FTTH subscribers and our fiber Optic lines cover about 95% of the population in Japan. In recent years, we're particularly focused on digital transformation with AI. Just a few years ago, the communication services we provided, such as telephone and internet, were people-centered. But Recently, the requirements for communication services have been changing dramatically because we're all in the IoT age, where everything is connected to the network. Now, we're contributing to the realization of a smart world. The way to realize the world smarter is ethnic a combination of FTTH and edge computing. But just the moment, think about it. When you think of just Mac, you probably come up with being built by 5G operators. ECHMEC, we propose, integrates at the high level FTTH, which is a low latency, low electricity, and high security with the computing resources. It only makes it possible for us to build the FMIC because of our high FTTH penetration rate in the country. We originally have a large number of telecommunication facilities, stations, and buildings throughout the country. We can install edge computing and vacant our buildings because We've been working on upgrading them continuously. We're moving forward with constructing a new architecture that integrates networks and computing to meet IoT age needs while making the most of our original facilities. We believe that video analysis is one of the fields where the capabilities of FMIC are most practical. That's because our FMIC has the power to transmit and analyze the massive amount of real-time stream images captured by cameras all over the city. Okay, let me tell you quickly about IVA markets in Japan. The domestic IVA market is expected to grow to $1.4 billion by 2023. More than $1 million IP cameras, the key devices that support it, are shipped annually. It's estimated that there's more than 5 million IP cameras in operation in Japan, and they're widely used in all kinds of industry and business categories. Therefore, it's assumed the infrastructure of IP cameras has sufficient potential to expand IVA business. 
On the other hand, even though there's a very high level of interest in using AI for video analysis, the number of cases where it's actually been used is very limited. Why? Our hypothesis is that delivery method is a main problem. The current mainstream is an on-premise style, right? It resizes images and analyzing them through an AI inference model by computing on cameras. But we considering this way has three major pain points for ISVs. First, they have to install user specific systems like system integration. Second, it needs to manage multiple locations from start to end. Last, high cost. This is the concept we're actually aiming for. We'll have a platform with GPU servers to consolidate the AI analysis. We want to collaborate with many ISBs to create a world where customers can easily add their AI to IP cameras and enjoy multiple AI applications. Fewer servers at the base, more computing resources on FMIC. So we've already started our POC. We made the application containerized with Docker and lifted them to FMIC. We're also developing the infrastructure to accommodate more cameras on a single Docker host. Through this development, our platform has been configured like this. We're going to provide a network, GPUs, and the container orchestration environment. So all SVs have to do is containerizing their applications. Our goal is to be the best choice platform for all ISVs. The keyword is 3S. Let me show you one by one. The first S is about speed. Our priority is how to enable ISVs to deliver IVA application faster with FMIC. We're not only adopting container orchestrations, but we're also trying to make various features available on a managed basis. It seems that there's each ISP for each development environment, so we make it possible they can use the domain they already use. They can develop AI applications and models in their current environment, update them, and push them as a container images to AWS ECR. We're planning to use our managed services for automatic deployment to the container. So why containers? The answer is straightforward portability. Once you package your application into a container in the development environment, you can carry, carry the container image from staging to the, to the production. We understand that it's very convenient, and that's why containers are widely used. Then, why container orchestration? We know it's handy for us to using containers like scheduling, out healing, etc., etc., but when you try to make agile circles of CACD like this with containers portability, we need to design and manage infrastructure declaratively with Kubernetes manifest. That's where OpenShift comes in. We think the current best practice is GitOps. Red Hat will introduce it later. Stay tuned. Okay, let's move on to the following S. Scalability. Suppose you build the servers on premise at each location. In the case, you need to manage projects for each customer and each site. On the other hand, 
even even if you provide the cloud services, you still need to take care of the network and the security. These things are nothing to do with developing AI itself, right? Don't you think it's considerable burden for ISVs? They can control customer sites all over the country, country at once by a click. Do you want to fly to hundreds of miles far away just to install the edge machine? Do you want to do you want to run to PUC places for every single application update? Do you want to bring the edge machine back to your office and then update them manually? It's scheduling for on-site visits, not really what you should do. And the only way to scale your business is to leave everything but AI development to FMIC. There's no reason not to use FMIC. Okay, last S, sustainability. Even after the PUC finally starts, there's still many problems like this. Service spaces, GPU resources, heat, getting unplugged, and on-site maintenance. That's definitely obstacles when ISVs want to keep scaling their service agilely. Okay, how about outsource all the rivalry and field operation issues to MTGs in FMIC? You can get the sustainability for scaling the AI businesses. We can organize the maintenance work after selling the AI. That's because our one of the strong point is an ecosystem which supports the local community that we have cultivated as a regional telecommunications carrier. You can focus on enhancing your AI applications by letting entities handle the field work, which is heavy burden for both system and cost. As you know, FMIC has three key S to support ISVs perfectly. We've already received inquiries from many IVA ISVs. And then we already started POC with customers on FMIC platform. Today, let me show you use case in retail markets. Okay, let me introduce a use case of a trial company, Fukuoka Japan based that runs grocery stores nationwide. They've started using Earth-Eyes behavior analysis technology in their stores. Let me explain you the background first. Generally speaking, the retail industry in Japan is suffering from a chronic workforce shortage. Moreover, they have to take many COVID-19 measures, such as social distancing, temperature check, disinfections, and setting up partitions. Hiring new people is not a practical way to solve the problem of workforce shortage. That's why we need to keep introducing AI to take place what people originally do. If customer service declines, so will profit. So we've introduced customer behavior projection AI in cosmetic areas where trial company wants to reinforce customer loyalty. It enables for store clerks to find a very easily high engaged, engaged customer with noti notification from their smartphones. It's possible to find out potential loyal customers and use it as a warning to deter shoplifting as well. It's a way to suggest the best method to serve customers so that the clerks can do it effectively with the least amount of operation. This is the use case of increased sales and steady decrease in shoplifting as shown by the highly satisfactory customer services. IVAI introduced here can be a customer service support tool to solve the workforce shortage. Okay, now is the time to wrap up for handover. NTTF the FMIC is a combination of the customer's existing cameras and teaches managed services. 
and the ISV's AI application. ISV can use this architecture as the minimum configuration. We realize the integration of SaaS-based AI applications secure high bandwidth FMIC and existing cameras. Customers can start AI analysis in the amount they want to use with cameras already they have without new system integration. Next, Red Hat will show you container-based GPU optimization that provides managed capabilities of application deployment and it supports easy integration with ISB development environments. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, let me dive into the technology for NTTE's Make AI platform furthermore and to see key points of their new Edge AI service planned to release this summer. This slide showed an example for the IVA, Intelligent Video Analytics Service. Typical traditional AI service needed embedded GPU IP camera for a single customer to deliver a single AI service. As Hashimoto-san mentioned, Entity East allows partner and the customer to run the many type of AI workload on the OpenShift GPU Mac platform at regional aggregation edge. The customer can deploy simple IP camera to get multiple AI service. So single IP camera can be leveraged for the many IVS services such as shoplifting detection AI service, face recognition AI service, people flow analysis AI, and behavior analysis AI. It's more economic way delivering the right service to meet each of customer demand. Also, Entity East is transforming the service delivery method through the GitOps practice. That I'll tell you later. IVA business partner just deployed their post-processing application so that they can deliver their AI service with GitOps on the Entity East Make AI platform running OpenShift and the GPU. LTT East provides common service elements, including RTSP client application port and AI workload port to each IVA business partner in each project namespace on OpenShift GPU Mac platform. Each IP camera is an RTSP server, and RTSP client content application on OpenShift GPU Mac platform can connect to each specific RTSP server of IP camera to collect video image by assigning RTSP URL address in OpenShift config map. And each IBA partner runs AI workload in each project namespace to analyze corrected video image on AI inference engine to get inference result data so that each IBA partner runs their post-processing application for their IBA business. How can NTTEs share the GPU resource with each IVA partner? Well, we have NVIDIA GPU operator technology to allocate designed GPU resource to each AI workload on OpenShift Mac platform. NVIDIA GPU operator enables OpenShift to schedule AI workload that required use of GPUs. In order to expose what feature and device each node needs, we first need to deploy node feature discovery, NAD operator. Once NAD operator deployed, NAD operator recognizes GPU and labels the node. Then the GPU operator is deployed to enable OpenShift to schedule each AI workload that required GPU resource. The GPU operator automatically installs four types of the container in the namespace called GPU operator resource. Cryo plugin demo set, NVIDIA driver demo set, NVIDIA device plugin demo set, and node exporter demo set. 
Cryo plugin demo set works on the NVIDIA GPU container runtime via Kubernetes standard Cryo. NVIDIA driver demo set is to enable the CUDA driver. NVIDIA device plugin demo set is an important part to allow the AI workload request GPU resource to run the GPU enabled part. In this example, you can see that making a request of the one NVIDIA GPU that OpenShift will expose to the AI workload. NVIDIA node exporter is to run the DCGM data center GPU manager to expose node level information monitoring to Prometheus. NVIDIA GPU operator is already released in the OpenShift operator hub. GPU operator for OpenShift will help to simplify and accelerate the computing intensive machine learning or deep learning modeling task for data scientists, as well as help running inference tasks across NTTE's Mac AI platforms. Lastly, before I hand over to a US team, I like to highlight one more unique point in NTT's cloud native Mac AI platform, which is GitOps. NTTEs is now working on the GitOps practice for finding the way to new continuous delivery on OpenShift Mac AI platform. The application is packaged in the container image and automate testing and deployment. In order for smooth delivery together with the partner and the customer, current best practice they found is GitOps that Kubernetes community is already doing. GitOps is a set of practice to use Git pull request to manage infrastructure and application configuration. Git repository in the GitOps is considered only the source of a tool and contain the entire state of the system so that tail of change to the system state are visible and auditable. In this deployment scenario, the partner is keeping its own CI pipeline and submitting the PR pull request through the deployment Git for deployment repository when they need to update the application with manifest file. The application is deployed in the NTTE's staging environment for testing and then will be deployed in the NTTE's production environment under the same CD pipeline if the test was successful. So they are now following the GitOps principle. In the GitOps principle, configuration of the system can be treated as a code. So they store it and have it automatically manage the version in the deployment Git. That way, they can roll out and roll back change in the system in the easy way. Using Git pull request, they can manage in the easy way how change that apply to the stored configuration. On top of that, they can leverage Git security mechanism in the order to ensure the ownership. So they don't need to share their cluster credential with anyone. The person committing the change only needs access to the deployment Git repository where the configuration is stored. They only need software that makes sure no configuration drifts are present. Red Hat recently released a new OpenShift GitOps tool adapting Argo CD for operator, along with a new OpenShift pipeline tool adapting Tekton for application developers. We will improve GitOps to carrier grade oriented system furthermore with OpenShift GitOps for the next step. Okay? That's all from my side. Wow, that was a lot of information. Let's recap. NTTE is created and is ready to deploy a cloud-native Mac AI platform at aggregation edge sites to deliver various services over their fiber-to-home footprint. 
of uh, regional edge with interconnected wide area. They use the latest technologies from Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform and NVIDIA GPUs to build their new MEC platform with GitOps practice to help accelerate their customers' digital transformation. This innovative platform enables rapid co-creation projects with partners and customers by turning each IP camera into a target for leveraging various AI services. NTTE shared a retail use case with Trial, where it improved in-store customer service, resulting in a year-over-year -year sales increase of 105% and 30% reduction in losses. All right, and I think with that, we conclude this session. But just before we go, I would just to share, I would like to share some other Red Hat re related sessions we have at GTC. Some might be relevant for you, a lot of good content there. And in addition to this Red Hat related sessions, there are a lot of good content uh, regarding related to EGX, NVIDIA EGX, NVIDIA Metropolis, Cloud XR, Aero, and many others. So with that, I would really like to thank NTT and Red Hat for this session, and also thank you all of you for your time. And I hope you enjoy GTC. Until next time.